Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Cal Preach. I am here with my mother and my mother is a rocker and a roller. And I'm a rocker and roller for Jesus, but you're just a rocker and a roller in general, baby. Oh, uh, honey bun. I love you. I love you too. I, love you. I know you have been a little disappointed in me and we're gonna talk about that um, because it's important, you know, mothers and daughters, it's heavy, man. It's heavy. Mom and daughter relationships are heavy. Now, just so you know, mom, you want to look over here in the corner, like above. Yeah, that's where the right camera there? lens is. Okay. Yeah. Just so you know. Okay. Um, but look how cute my mom's braids are. Can we just show him, them your braids? <gasps> look how cute she's got braids. I've got my Pocahontas look it's here today. It's so cute, mom. <laughs> really, it suits you. It Thank really you. suits you. You got to do that almost, you know, like all the time now. Okay. It's like your new thing, promise? Okay. I just had a dizzy spell. Whoa. Why? I don't know. You're not drinking, I am. I know. It was New Year's last night. I didn't have, I had two <laughs> sips of wine. Oh. Yeah, I had well. two sips of wine, but we watched Justin Bieber rock it out. He sings like an angel. Have you ever heard him sing live? No. Oh my gosh. Mom, he's your nephew. He's my nephew once removed. <laughs> You've got to listen to him <laughs> sing. He's such a good singer. But I like him. I, I just like his whole vibe. Yeah, I mean, there's so much to love about him. He's, he's an amazing drummer, too. Really? Oh, yeah. Like, Aww. the guy can play any instrument, but he's amazing on the drums. But uh, we had a really, really good time. And then the other day, Billy said to me, you know, I think you ought to call your mama because her feelings were hurt. She watched a couple California preachings, and she heard a couple of things that she wasn't so happy about. And... I said, oh, I feel really bad because I always try and be conscious of what comes out of my mouth when I tell my childhood stories, which you know there are many. Oh, we all have many. Yes, we, we do. We all have many. We do. And we live in a public family. But, but you have to be careful what you say because you don't want to hurt your mother's feelings. No. And, and it makes me wonder if I was really a bad mother. Which you were not. Well, And you are thank not. You. Thank you. And you never could be. Were you a little distracted at times? But that distracted. Distracted. You know what? Uh, I left John, your father. Yeah. When you were uh, less than a year old. I know. Um, it really. I, I had been thinking about it, but it really came to a head when I saw you crawling around the living room floor and you pick something up off the floor and put it in your mouth. And I went over to see what it was and I took it out of your mouth and it was a Benny. What's a Benny? A Benzedrine. What's a that? Pill. Oh, it's a pill. It's a <gasps> pill of Benzedrine that your father was using all the time. And you know, he obviously just put his hand in his pocket and pulled out something and the Benzedrine pulled you know yeah but that could have really really messed up a baby oh, could've, it could have killed you could've really it, hurt me it could have really hurt you you were just a, a about 10 months old oh my gravy and so i i rushed over and i pulled the the benzedrine out of your mouth and i thought this is it i cannot let her live in this house where uh, i have to watch her 24 hours a day and and be sure that she's not in harm's way you know yeah which i was it which you were clearly and so when i left my house in bel-air which i really loved mm. we was that a, really hard for you to leave that house it was hard but mm -hmm. you know i left with three things i left with my daughter and her crib and a Tiffany lamp. <laughs> a Tiffany lamp, I love it. Which is still in the living room. We have to show it to them before. You don't have to tell anybody everything. It's nailed to we, the ground. We don't know where it is. Yeah, we, don't, we have no idea where it is. <laughs> but um, I, I- You escaped. Moved, I, I moved us to a little house in Malibu and uh, then I realized uh, through my accountant that 
um, John had drained all of our bank accounts and that none of my checks were good. And, you know, he, he really thought that he could smoke me out, that I would have to come back to him because I was desperate, broke and desperate. But, you know, he didn't know who he was messing with. He didn't. <laughs> he didn't. And, you know, it took me 10 years to get my life and my finances together after my divorce from John. But I have a beautiful house. Mm -hmm. It's little and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've lived here for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. I, I And... Uh, I just want, I want China to have the best life she can possibly have. Thank you. And she has a beautiful husband who uh, <coughs> adores her mm -hmm. and supports her. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I envy that. I mm -hmm. do. It's great that you have that. Mm -hmm. And... I want you to always remember that he is making all these, I won't call them concessions, but he's making all of this for you. Yeah. Because he loves you. I know. I know. And he's supporting all of my endeavors, which, you know, to him, some, to a lot of people seem a little cray cray, a little yeah. wacky. Yeah. But he's supporting me because he, he loves, you. loves me and he knows that it's my, my mission and my passion to spread the word of God. And it's also his mission and his passion to keep his family together. Yes. And to keep his children educated. I mean, yes. I, if there's one thing I can say about Billy, it's that he has always, always put education at the, at the helm of his ship. Amen. And his children are all straight A students. That's right. And our children. And <laughs> I, I wasn't. And, well, you used to beg me, you used to say, China, please just get a D. Just get a D. Do you remember that? And you were like, just pass. Back then, you could pass with a D. I don't even think you can now. I don't know. I don't. I think so. Really? I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Were you a D student? No. I only got one D <gasps> in my entire life. I'm so and, embarrassed. And that was in algebra. Because I missed the first five days because I was truant the first five days of <sighs> algebra. And so I had no idea what they were talking about. Why do people major on the minor? Five days. I know. Five days. I, I know. Yeah, I but mean, I, they I, didn't have to fail you for that. Well, they didn't fail me. He they gave, gave you me, a D. He gave me a D and he told me, he says, I know you have no idea yeah. what this is about. Right. But I don't want you to have to do it again. Right. He says it would be good if you got a little tutoring. Yeah. <laughs> Which you never got. I never got. <laughs> but I want to publicly apologize, Mom. I'm serious. I want to publicly apologize for hurting your feelings. Because anything that I said in any of my videos that hurt your heart and made you feel like I didn't think you were a good mom. Or that I was trying to put you down or humiliate you in any way. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Boy, she can sound very convincing. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, darling. I love yeah. you. I love you. You know, my childhood, you know, you might not think that my childhood was difficult, but my childhood was very difficult. And well, you, for, yeah, but I'm not reason. saying because of you, because of you. I'm just saying that there were some unfortunate circumstances. I didn't have a dad there to love me and support me and to help raise me, which I would have loved and would have been good for me. You can't play both roles. No mom can be a mom and a dad to a child. You know, I'm not putting single motherhood down, but every child deserves a father and a mother. And I only had a, a dad. My mother died when I was five. And he did everything he was such a good parent, and he did everything he was amazing. to amazing. help me get over the fact that I didn't have a mother. He did the best he could to provide. And he did. Yeah. You know, he was going to college when I was growing up. Yeah. And it was, he was so sweet 
and and he took this role he took this role of a father very seriously mm -hmm. after my mother died mm -hmm. and even before that mm -hmm. but especially after my mother died mm -hmm. um, uh, I certainly it, um, I I was very lucky to have my dad to help me process all of Let the me ask you, loss. Sorry to interrupt you, the loss, but do you feel like you've processed your mom, your mom passing, or do you feel like you're still? I don't think that you ever process it. Yeah. I don't think that. No, you never do. But do you feel like you've given yourself the luxury of time to be able to work that through, like in therapy well, or? Hell, I'm seventy six years old. So you better get to it. Yeah. <laughs> You better I, get to it, girl. I, I I have. And you know what? There's still times in my 70s when I think about it and I cry about it. But that's processing it. I know? never even met her. No. Oh, gosh. She was... But I met, I met my great-grandmother, Alice. Yeah. And she lived with us until the day she died, right? Oh, no, she went back she to... Went we back talked to about this in the last yeah. video. Yeah, she was 94 when she died. And my other grandmother, my paternal grandmother, was 94 when she died. So you got some good jeans. I got some good jeans. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I bought two new pairs of jeans the other day. I was I'm so excited. <laughs> Um, I got these flowers for my mother when I found out that I had hurt her feelings. And these are, I mean, are these not stunning, Mother? That, it's a beautiful, I would like to say that. That it made up for what I said, but it didn't. That <laughs> effusive flowers. Effusive flowers. In West Pico. West Pico Boulevard. Los Angeles, California, 90064. I mean, look at the moss on the side. It's just all oh, so, so beautiful. beautifully done. My goodness, that's gorgeous. So this is how you're spending your money. This, well, on you. <laughs> on you, let us not forget. Well, yeah, okay. Uh, but, you know, mother-daughter relationship is super, super important. And it's like life does not go on forever. And I'm very, very, very cognizant of the fact that, you know, you and I, you know, yeah. it's, lim it out. it's limited. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not going to go on forever. But you know what? <sighs> Makes me the, sad. <laughs> I'm going to live to be 106. <laughs> you are. I, you I, are. That's what the, that's what the Chinese uh, fortune teller told oh, me in great. Chinatown. Yay. So I'm going with it. Okay. It, it, it's fine with me. <laughs> And I just want China to know that she's got great genes. She's probably going to live to 106 herself, but she's going to have to do without me for 24 years to do that. Right. And but you're going to be with Jesus because that's where I'm going, and you're coming with me. I know. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Is it over? Everything's over. What? No. <laughs> It's We're not over? No. Oh, I'm sorry. No, because you know what? I think, like, I have a couple more questions for you. Okay. Look at how nice and tan you are. It's, it's tinder. In, in relationship. What? Did you notice I put your dress on? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why the closet was open. <laughs> I went into your little wardrobe. You didn't have it. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Thank you. It's, it's adorable. Thank you. Oh my gosh, looks, I just it looks love great it. on you. I love it. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you, 2021, how was your 2020? <laughs> Miserable. Miserable. Our, our, my son, Aaron, has COVID. At this very moment. God bless him. He's uh, at least he's very no, almost non-symptomatic, right? Well, he has a little no, cold. He, he has a cold. He he was sick. He was, he was sick. For, Did he have a for fever? A couple of days. Because he didn't uh, tell me he had a fever. Well, he didn't tell me he had a fever, but he told me that he could not get out of bed. He was so tired. Yeah, I and that's a that. that's a, a a symptom. Yeah, that most people have. Yeah. So twenty twenty was just blah, terrible. 
you know, I have been quarantined since March. I know. And you've been because, lonely. Because, no, there's a difference between alone and lonely. There is. And I'm not lonely. Because you like your own company. I, I wish that I could socialize with people, but I can't. Right. But I read a lot. Yeah. And I <laughs> watch the news more than I should. But I'm so glad that Trump is out and we do not have to... We don't talk politics on this channel. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> talk politics it's just too much yeah well that's how i feel okay and you're entitled to your feeling moving right along mm, okay so um <laughs> so um i have a joke for you okay it's a really bad joke okay okay you ready mm-hmm where do you take a child who has been seriously injured in a game of peekaboo? <laughs> I don't know, dear. You take them to the I see you. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you hear a great joke and you and forget a few it. hours later you're you've forgotten it? Yeah. Uh, Someone told me a really funny joke <laughs> this morning. I was right here and I was laughing so hysterically. <laughs> I can't for the life of me think of what, what that joke what it was. was. Oh gosh. No. no, but you have a good one about the... <laughs> Will you tell them that joke? Yeah, this is one from my dentist <laughs> who I always uh, relied upon to tell me... I I went into his office one day and was waiting out in the reception area. Were you in agony? Uh, not about my teeth, but I, I was in agony about something. <laughs> and I just broke down and wept in the reception area. So the gal comes out and she's like holding my hand and saying, it's okay, Michelle, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, and she says, uh, get the dentist out here. So he comes over and he kneels down next to me. And he says, Michelle, I want to ask you a question. And I'm, tears are streaming down my face. And he says, why did the chicken cross the, oh, no, no. No, he says, uh, why does a chicken coop have two doors. Why does a chicken coop have, have two, two doors? doors? And I thought about that for a long time and I said, I don't know. And he said, because if it had four doors, it would have to be called a chicken sedan. <laughs> Instead of a coop. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so funny. That's and then, so good. And I was laughing so hard, I fell off the chair. And he <laughs> said, okay, she's ready for her cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. I love it. So am I, am I forgiven completely? China? Is there anything else I need to do? You are forgiven. From the bottom but of your heart? From the bottom of my heart. heart. But I want you to be conscious of the love that I have for you, the love that I've always had for you, mm -hmm. and all the things, a lot of things that you don't even know, that we're not going to share with the rest of the world. That you've done for me. Yes. And we're going to leave it at this. I love you with all my heart, and I'm very glad that you... This hand is awkward. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad that you asked to do this. I know. Me too. Because I thought, gosh, she's got all these people who subscribe to her and who love her and listen to her. And she, 
and I feel like a villain. Right, and I don't want to villainize you because that is the last thing I would want to do. It's just that in a lot of my stories, unfortunately, like I did a lot of things that you didn't know about. Right. And I just was like running wild a little bit for a while there. All right. And I was doing things I shouldn't have done and I got into trouble I shouldn't have gotten, in, gotten into. And you know, nobody's perfect. You think no. I'm a perfect mother? No, but I am. You, you are. <laughs> You're a legend. I always say it. No, but I love you and I forgive you for it. We are totally fine. Because Perfect. I fine. adore you. Perfectly. Fine. Oh, this was a really important question. I know it has nothing to do. This is my total ADD distraction, but I don't want to forget. Do you have any idea how dad came up with the title California Dreamin? Well, it all really began with my nagging him for us to go back to California. Oh, you were in New York in the we cold? Were, we were in New York uh, in the bitter, bitter win, uh, winter of 64. Yeah. 63, 64, around there. Where was I? And it I? was horrible. It was, and uh, I would beg him for us to go back and live in California. And he was saying, the music business is in New York, Michelle. We would not be uh, having concerts and uh, because the Journeymen were a very successful group. Yeah, he was already in a group called the Journeymen before Mamas and Papas, and, and they were doing great, right? They were doing they really, really, really well. Great Co college. I love concerts. the Journeymen. If you've never heard the Journeymen, definitely Google the Journeymen and listen to their music. Amazing yeah. folk music. Yeah, and he just wouldn't do it because we were he was with GAC in New York which is uh uh uh, uh that was a uh, what do you call it uh, independent it was a uh, record company yeah N not a record company but a, an agency an agency okay that booked all of their stuff and they were always booked they always we always had a very uh lucrative uh, uh, happy we had a very good life in new york oh, okay you know we weren't poor no and but i still long to you come. were a west coast girl you were an la girl yeah and i, I just longed to come to california so he started writing a song about that yeah he woke me up in the middle of the night and he said listen to this and he played me the first eight bars of California Dreamin'. And, and I said, oh, that's beautiful, John. He says, well, wake up, help me write it. And I said, I'll help you write it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Michelle, wake up, help me write this song. You'll thank me for this someday. Did he tell you he'd give you 50% of the publishing if you woke up or no? That was never an issue. That was not <laughs> something we never You never did, about. yeah. It's like you knew that if you helped, he'd give you a piece of it. Yeah. I never even thought about it. I didn't even know what publishing was. <laughs> now you know. Now I'm quite <laughs> aware of what publishing is. <laughs> uh, so you woke it's up and wrote wonderful. it with him. Didn't you write the second verse? Yeah, I wrote the second verse. Which is stopped into a church. I passed, I passed along the way. Well, I got, got down, down on my knees and, and I pretend to pray. I pretend. Is it began or pretend? Pretend. It's pretend. Pretend to pray. You know the preacher likes the cold. Likes the cold. He knows I'm, I'm gonna, gonna stay. Knows I'm gonna stay. California dreaming. On such a winter's day. <laughs> day. <laughs> We're trying here. <laughs> and so, you know, we wrote the song and we kind of threw the paper inside a drawer and forgot about it until... Until, uh, until you got to L.A. No, until we got Cass and Denny and we formed the group and we started uh, re rehearsing it. 
in the Virgin Islands. Amazing. And then did you kind of feel like you had a hit on your hands or you really just didn't know? We didn't know. We sang it for Lou Adler and he said, oh, got anything else? <laughs> <laughs> and then you played him Monday, Monday too? Uh, yes. And go where you want to go. Wow. I mean, we basically played him the first album. Amazing. I was watching a Karen Carpenter uh, documentary the other day and and Richard, her brother, was talking. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he said that the first time that it was it was before the Carpenters, they were in another group before the Carpenters and that they had no equipment. They went to the studio and they were going to go do a performance the next night, but they were panicking because they had no equipment, Richard and and, and Karen. And that the studio manager said, look, the mamas and papas were here last night and their equipment's in there. I'll let you take it, but you got to promise me you'll have it back by nine o'clock tomorrow morning because they're coming back and they'll flip out if the, if the equipment's not here. And they were like, are you sure? The mamas and the papas, they were freaking out because of course they hadn't had a hit yet. And they took your equipment and they did a show, but guess who walked into the show that night? Who? Mama Cass, Cass Elliot. <laughs> And she laughed. She laughed. She had such a good sense of humor about it. Yeah. And uh, we have a very funny joke about Cass Elliot and Karen Carpenter. What is it? In the script. Oh, what is it? You can't, can't tell. Oh, okay. There's a movie being made. <laughs> so you got to see the movie when it's out. All right. We're going to end it now. I love you. I love you. Mwah. And we end it with Peace of Christ. Can you say it? Huh? Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ? Yeah. Can you say that? What peace? Do you feel any peace? Uh huh? It's peace, like peace. Oh, peace. Not like a piece of pie. Okay. Like <laughs> peace. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Some people say think I'm saying pizza crust. But I'm not saying pizza crust. Okay. I'm saying peace of Christ. Peace. Are you ready? Christ. One, two, three. Peace, peace of, of Christ. Christ. Bye guys. Love you. Bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Love you, Mama. <laughs> Love you too. Bye. Bye.